our next speaker coming up today is Laura Cummins. And Laura is an instrumental figure in the history of the college. I believe she was the first chair. She has absolutely an ongoing leadership position at Langara, continues to be a key partner with the college. And without further ado, we're going to hear from Laura. Um, I'd first like to say thank you very much for inviting me here. And what I would like to do is actually take you back to year 10 minus 1. Um, because the order and council had come, we finally received it, I think, somewhere around like December 15th, 15th, 18th or so on, 2002. And BCDNA put out a call for volunteers to be part of the board, and I can, or interim board. And I can remember looking at this and thinking, well, that looks kind of interesting. And so, you know, beginning of ju early January, I head off to this meeting, and my husband says to me, don't volunteer to be chair. <laughs> and I, don't worry, you know, I, so I'm just, you know, I have no idea what I'm getting into. So I come home, and he says to me, you didn't duck, did you? <laughs> and I, I well, nobody else put their name for it. So, Anyway, I had no idea what I was getting into, and um, but I have to say, from the, the interim board's perspective, there were six dietitians and three public members who had been appointed by the ministry, and I have never worked with such a dynamic, motivated team. And what was interesting about it is we were all tended to be leaders, and often when you get a bunch of leaders together, you know, there's a lot of friction. But in this particular case, we all had very diverse skills that were very complementary. And so, you know, we were sitting in the first meeting and we're all sort of chomping a bit here, you know, ready to go. And we had um, some excellent public representatives in Joyce and Carol who brought a wealth of experience to us kind of newbies in learning how to be a, a regulatory body. What I don't think a lot of people realize is that, uh, yes, you know, BCDNA very generously gave us, I think it was around $65,000, $69,000. But one of the big problems was the order and council stipulated that we had to set up a completely independent organization, even though we weren't yet officially um, a regulatory college. We had to be separate from BCDNA. So that meant we had to have our own phone number, we had to have our own you know, so interim registrar, we had to have our own offices, and which was fine. And we sort of you know, got all of that set up until around May I began to realize that the money BCDNA had given us was you know, just flowing like sand through our fingers. And you know, luckily you know, I sort of started crunching some numbers and realized we actually needed a quarter of a million dollars to start up the college. Um, 69 or 65 wasn't going to go very far. <laughs> and so I actually, around that time, one of our public members stepped down. I approached the, um, at that time, the Minister of Health was uh, the late Cindy Hawkins. And I didn't actually ask, I told her. I said, we do not want another public member appointed. We have an incredibly well-functioning team at this point, interim board. And, and I also you know, said to her, we're shutting down operations. Uh, we're going down to one phone number that Glenn and I would then periodically remember to pick up voicemail messages. We literally shut the office down um, to, to bare bones. And, I can remember we had some very um, lengthy, you know, heated discussions around how do we get money? How do we come up with, you know, a quarter of a million dollars? And I approached banks, I approached the government, um, sort of saying, can you give us a loan? Um, but we had no assets and we didn't kind of exist, if you like, from, you know, from the banking or the financial institution's perspective. So I can remember in October, we finally, in almost desperation, thought, okay, Let's appeal to the BCDNA members. And so we pitched to, and discussed this a lot at the board level, um, we pitched the idea that if people would pay their $500 registration fee in advance, um, that we thought it might give us enough money to kind of get us rolling. 
We also, um, I also advised the government that there was no way we would actually have a college up and running by December 18th. We had a one-year mandate. And could we extend that to April 1st? And to this day, I am absolutely in awe of the fact that over 200 dietitians paid us $500 just before Christmas. Um, and this is after having given money to BCGNA and so on. And it gave us that 100000 or so dollars that we could actually get the college off the ground. Um, we so, came so close <laughs> after 25 years of work behind the scenes to actually not having a college. And it was the membership that really came, came through here. Um, other things that it was a, just a wonderful opportunity. You know, we got to pick the logo. Um, we commissioned somebody to kind of come up with the designs. You know, we're just trying to decide on what colors to have. Um, we also, Carol spent, was our expert on bylaws, and I mistakenly volunteered to proofread. I never, ever want to see another set of bylaws. I must have read. our bylaws about six or eight times. Um, and so, and one other thing that actually Monica reminded me of is the, we made the decision that we thought it would be a kind of a nice touch if the board chair actually signed all the certificates for registrants, not thinking that I signed almost a thousand of these. <laughs> Fern used to drop them off to me at Langara, about 150 at a time. And I tell you, after about doing 25 or 30 of these, I keep, would sit there and I think, what on earth is my name? You know, like I was, it was, and I had, you know, I was developing carpal tunnel and, you know, the whole thing. Anyway, it was an incredible experience. I wouldn't, I don't regret a thing. Um, I, you know, I'm just really thankful that I've actually been able to be part of setting up something and creating a whole entity. And just one of the things, last things I wanted to share with you is when we had our first board meeting, um, it was initially facilitated. And after you know the morning session, a number of people were sort of saying, let's get rid of the facilitator and get on with this here. And we sat around and sort of discussed, what's our mission statement going to be for the next year to get this board up and running? And I can still to this day remember that we came up with doing it right, comma, from the first, and I think we've adhered to that. Um, you know, I'm really pleased to see where CDBC is these days. That we're still creeping towards our million-dollar <laughs> reserve fund. That seemed, you know, almost unattainable 10 years ago. So we've come a long way, and I'm just really thankful that I've been able to be part of that. So thank you. Thank you very much.